Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here. Today I'm going to be wiping and formatting my storage device using an old school program called Diskport. And so it should be available from everything in uh, Windows XP all the way to Windows 8. And so if you want to skip the video and just look at the description for all the commands that I'll be typing in, you can do that. Uh, but if you do stick around towards the end of this instructional video, I will be uh, explaining the different devices that you could be using this for and the different scenarios and some of my experience as to why you would be using this program. And so uh, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is plug in your device. And I'm using a USB thumb drive and I got it plugged in straight into the computer no hubs or front panel connectors or anything like that. I'm trying to connect it straight into a USB port on the motherboard, right? And once you've got that plugged in, we're going to go ahead and go to start and we're going to type in CMD for the command prompt, right? And once this comes up, you'll type in disk part, all one word, uh, no um, spaces or anything like that. And uh, you may get a pop up that says uh, user access control or UAC is requesting permission to run this program just go ahead and allow it and once you got that started up you go to list disk here right it's going to show you all the disk uh, that's uh, being recognized by the computer right now and so if you're not sure which drive is going to be yours if you're a little weary about that uh, I would suggest that before you begin all this with your computer shut off unplug all the non-essential hard drives uh, or the drives that have very important data on uh, and just leave your main boot drive as well as the drive that you want to wipe out uh, but for me here the dead giveaway is that it's uh, 962 megabytes I know that I have a 1 gig thumb drive in there everything else is hundreds of gigs so I can be certain that uh, disk 4 is the disk that I want and so I'm gonna go ahead and select disk 4 so it selects space disk space 4 it's very important Right, and so uh, once you've select, selected that disk uh, that you want, we're gonna go ahead and bring it online for whatever reason. If it says offline here, you want to uh, bring it online by typing in online disk, right? It's already online, I don't need to do that. And then we're also going to clear any read-only attributes. So attributes disk clear read only read only is one word right so it's attribute space disk space clear space read only and so uh, what that does is just basically clears any read only attributes that you might have on the disk otherwise uh, there'll be an obstacle and we wouldn't be able to continue on cleaning the disk which is the next command here clean uh, and so you got to be careful with this speak now forever hold your peace because if you press enter here that's it you're gonna be wiping anything there's no going back it doesn't give you a confirmation asking you are you sure you want to do that it's just gonna go ahead and do it which is what I'm pressing now so you've been warned and so once it's completed the next option that you have to do let me show you here if you list disk if you notice here under GPT this is a partition table or the GUID partition table none of them I have here are GUID partitioned but if you wanted to convert this to a GPT you would type this out as convert GPT right so our disk 4 is selected here and we're going to convert this into GPT and if we look here you'll see that there's going to be a little asterisk next to GPT under our disk 4 here this has to do with uh, UEFI type of stuff I'll get to that in the later end of this video but uh, if it was already GPT you can type in convert MBR and it's converted back into MBR and Windows has just recognized the fact that you've type put in a um, bootable hard drive that's recognized by this operating system and it's asking you to format it and here at this point you could actually go through the process of setting up your disks this way but we're gonna keep it geeky and continue on with the command lines and I'm gonna hit cancel here right and so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create partition primary right and so we've just created one primary partition on our thumb drive here and we're gonna go ahead and select 
our primary partition, which is select partition one. Oops, partition one, right? And now our partition has been selected. We're gonna go ahead and make it active. So you type in active. And now that it's active, we're gonna go ahead and format this. And this is format space fs for file system equals ntfs right or you could be fat or fat32 or xfat if you want um, and then we're going to label it we'll just call it label equals usb call it usb for whatever reason and then we're going to make it quick right because this is uh, going to take like you know 10 seconds versus if you didn't do quick and you just left it it would have taken a lot longer also this is uh, without the quick it's going to actually really format and wipe out your drive and erase and put random data over your drive not really good if you're trying to recover data and I'll get to that in, in the explanation part of things later on right so I've gone ahead and formatted it now the computer recognizes it now it's a fully functioning device that you can drag and drop and use now it's recognized by Windows right but for whatever reason let's say you wanted to rename your uh, letter of that device and we can go ahead and assign it a letter so it's assign letter and we'll give it a letter we'll call it something cool give it the letter X right and so now it is USB drive letter X right and uh, last but not least we can go ahead and list the volume and it's just uh, all the data or information that it has on every drive here and here is your X drive USB that's NTFS formatted it's a removable drive it's 961 megabytes and it is healthy so that's pretty much it for using disk part hopefully that was um, useful to you and now what I would like to talk about is the various devices or um, media that you could be using this on and first up is SD memory cards you can use this for SD memory cards of course you would need a SD memory card reader to plug into USB uh, and then you would just apply this same method for that next would be portable USB hard drives right and really it's just a laptop hard drive inside of an enclosure and then next you can use this on solid state drives and this is an M SATA solid state drive with an appropriate adapter that makes it into SATA uh, SSD hard drive right much like in a laptop so you can use that and then solid state drives right traditional solid state drive here as well as a notebook hard drive uh, a spin spinning notebook hard drive right you can uh, use this method for that and then also a regular desktop hard drive here that's SATA now how do you get all of this stuff connected into your computer well for that you would be using these devices here first up is a adapter and uh, this is kind of a rudimentary device here where it has uh, supplies power to your hard drive a notebook hard drive as well as desktop SATA hard drives and uh, it would convert it and plug it into uh, the USB port on your computer and uh, it's pretty inexpensive and it's quick and easy uh, for setup unlike uh, an enclosure here for example one of these um, this you would plug in a, a notebook hard drive into this 2.5 inch to USB something similar to this you would plug it into here and it would plug into the USB and that's how you would get it connected uh, or a laptop hard drive let's say for example that you took out uh, of your notebook and uh, you want to plug it in to an enclosure here uh, as well as a full-size desktop uh, enclosures like this one right here 3.5 inches is what you would use to pull a laptop or a desktop a hard drive out of and uh, this is for you know those times where you're just uncomfortable or you don't have room in your computer uh, you don't want to go in there and uh, you know tinker around with stuff although I do recommend plugging it uh, these type of bare drives uh, straight into the computer if you can it's always the best way and um, next is a uh, docking stations and this is uh, you know if you're gonna do something often 
uh, plug in hard drives into your computer through USB here. They have some that uh, have two ports, two bays here, one for full size a desktop hard drive as well as a uh, notebook hard drives that you can do, right? And so well, next I want to talk about, so what type of scenarios or whatever reasons, why would you be doing this? And uh, in my experiences, I've done this a lot with uh, Mac hard drives because Mac tends to put on this partition on there that in Windows disk management, I just cannot get rid of this small little partition, but this part will get rid of that. And so that's uh, one of the um, reasons why I use the disk part utilities. Another is, say for example, you have been experimenting with uh, the Chromebook or the Acer C7 Chromebook, I get a lot of questions from people uh, who watch my videos on how to install Linux on here and uh, they either don't want it anymore or they mess something up and they want to put everything back to the way it is and uh, I usually, my method is to just take out the hard drive here, plug it into the computer like the methods I just men mentioned and uh, run disk part on it, wipe everything out and restore everything back uh, to its original state here for that particular device. Um, that's my other experience with this. Uh, another would be for the whole GPT and MBR and UEFI um, debacle kind of going on right now. A lot of new computers have uh, UEFI BIOSes. We know it as uh, BIOS. It's not really called BIOS anymore. But the UEFI boots GPT um, partitions, right? Or the GUID partition table. And you might have to convert your hard drive from MBR, master boot record, over to GPT. Luckily, you don't necessarily have to do that right now because a lot of the UEFI motherboards come with backwards compatibility um, for legacy uh, devices that uses MBR. Uh, that's a whole other topic of discussion, really, but uh, that's another reason why you would be using this program is to convert back and forth between GPT or MBR. I if you have a newer computer and it uses UEFI, there's a lot of good benefits for GPT. Do your research as to why uh, you would want to be using GPT, right? Now, another question that I get often is, will this fix my hard drive, right? If the hard drive is failing or has failed or storage device is failing. No, this does not fix hard drives. If you have a hard drive that's failing electronically or, or electrically or a hard drive that's got a click of death into it mechanically it's failed this does not fix any of it it does not bring it back uh, or temporarily bring something back if your device is dead or corrupted it's dead right uh, you may get something like a cyclic redundancy error where there isn't anything wrong mechanically with your desktop hard drive but there is a motherboard here and uh, cyclic redundancy does mean that something electrically or electronically is malfunctioned on that system board on your hard drive there and uh, this part does not bring it back or wipe out or erase any of that type of stuff or firmware on your SSD or anything like that it does not fix any of that you have to have a functioning drive uh, in order for you to be able to use this utility right and so can this be used to recover data in a sense yes I've used this uh, alongside with some recovery software but the recovery software needs a drive that's recognized by Windows or by the operating system and so I had to use this part as just as long as when you go to the format portion of things that you don't do a full format where it writes data you write on top of your data that you're trying to recover and that's what a full format does that's why I tend to go with the quick format so that I can recover the data and uh, for the video about recovering data using that software. I'll put that link in the description. And so that's pretty much it. That's all I got to say about this particular topic. Hopefully it was helpful and informative to you. Um, this is pretty much going to be the basis uh, for future projects that I do. I may revert back to this video and say, hey, go watch the video on how to use disk part, especially with this Acer C7 Chromebook experiments that I might be continuing on making videos with. So definitely stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.